Hello and welcome back. This is learning objective number two of chapter nine, where we are looking at long lived assets. Hey, quick question before we get going. Uh, do you want to hear what a sad little French bulldog sounds like? Uh, because you might during this video or the next one. Uh, I have one of those stools that uh, it's like a knee stool. So there's no like lap for him to sit on. Uh, he likes the lap, he likes to snuggle and he is pawing at me. However, I need these typing fingers. To, uh, to do my job. So we will see. He might get a little wine. That's just Guinness saying hello. All right. So the middle of the story, what happens after we buy the asset? Um, while we have it, um, you know, we may need to calculate depreciation. If it is a, an asset with a, um, within defined life, meaning that this is something that we are going to use up over a series of years. Uh, remember with land that has an indefinite life so we don't depreciate it uh, there would be no middle of the story for land um, asterisks it could always be impaired meaning you know I don't know economic conditions are such that the same piece of land a year ago went for a hundred thousand now it goes for 80 uh, you'd likely have to depreciate that down depending on a couple things we will get into more depth than that again in 3105 so if none of this sounds like fun <laughs> um, you know maybe 3105 isn't for you but I shouldn't even say fun because like accounting is a tool and tools like them, themselves aren't inherently inherently fun. Like I'm not like jazzed to go use my hammer in the morning. However, I'm pretty jazzed to have a hammer put in a picture uh, and hang it in the wall for me. So, you know, um, if you're interested in the fun things that the tool of accounting could do for you, then 3105 is for you. All right, moving along, clicking over. Uh, depreciation. Uh, this, by definition, it is a systematic allocation of the cost. Yeah, yeah, that thing we did last last chapter of property, plants, and equipment over that asset's useful life. It's a process of cost allocation. We are not talking about the asset's current value. This is not what we do. Uh, the asset's value is captured at the beginning of the story when we record its costs and all the <laughs> its direct costs, as well as all the things that had to get it ready for operation. And now, during the middle of the story, we take that cost and we allocate it over time. There are some instances where sometimes we revalue assets, but that is um, a very niche um, occurrence. It won't happen in this class, and, and you actually have to opt into it, and it's only available under international financial reporting standards. So we are gonna learn uh, this process. We <laughs> um, allocate costs uh, over a number of years, meaning we depreciate the asset that we capitalized in learning objective number one. Into, and we, you know, our goal is to do it over the economic life such that when the asset is at the end of its uh, economic life, it has a net book value, that is the asset is on your books at zero. Um, this is a non-cash item. It doesn't use cash, it doesn't provide cash depreciation, is literally really just writing off the use of the asset over time, writing it off to the income statement. So no cash. If you see a journal entry with cash and depreciation, I want you to check and really make sure and ask yourself why that journal entry is there. All right, so what are factors that influence the calculation of depreciation? Well, this includes cost. So what we did in our learning objective number one. Uh, then we also have to know what the useful life is. Uh, so useful life can come in two ways. It can be the period of time that the asset, that be scratching, that the asset is expected to be available for use, or it can be the number of units that that asset is expected to produce um, over time. So interesting. It can either be years or it can be units. All right, and then residual value. Uh, not, how do I say this? Not everything will go down to zero value at the end of its life. Uh, so for example, a car might feel like it's not worth anything at the end, but um, you know, it probably is worth at least $1,000 that you can sell for scrap. Uh, at least that's what we done with our old smart car uh, and our old Acura. So after it you know, became at the end of its useful life, you know, it was costing more uh, to repair than it was worth. 
uh, we were at least able to sell it for some scrap or residual value. All right, so these are three different cost classifications and we're gonna be using them in different ways in subsequent calculations. So we have three main types of depreciation, met depreciation methods in this course. Uh, straight line, diminishing balance, and units of production. So you will see units of production in your textbook. However, we will not be calculating that in our course. So rather, we are going to be looking at straight line and diminishing balance items. Let's take a look at some examples. All right, so we have a delivery van. So this is gonna be the same information for the next two examples, which, you know, two examples, two types of depreciation methods. I feel like you know where I'm going with this, but here's our set of case facts, which will be used for the next two examples. A delivery van was bought on Jan 1 of 2021. It cost $33,000. Uh, scrap value, residual value at the end is estimated to be $3,000. We think this van is gonna be have a useful life of five years. I guess this is an Amazon van. It's, it's taking all the packages to everybody. Uh, and that it's estimated useful life in kilometers is 100,000 because these are not highway miles. These are city miles. Sure. All right, here are the numbers, people. Uh, straight line depreciation method. We, we like straight line because it says, cool, what's your cost? 33,000. What's your residual value? 3,000. Cool. 30,000 will be depreciated over time. How much time? Well, five years of useful life, which means that each year we will depreciate this asset by $6,000. Huh. All right. So year one, we depreciate it by 6,000. Year two, 6,000. Year three, 6,000. Four, 6,000. Five, 6,000. And at the end of year five, yeah, that's right. It went from being worth 33,000 at the beginning of year one on your books to being reflected at 3,000, which is the residual value on your books. Uh, it's called straight line because each year the depreciation expense remains the same. All right. So let's give that a go. Um, we have Buckingham Limited. Uh, give this slide a read, pause it, and see what you can do to, to calculate the uh, depreciation using uh, the straight line method. And then let me know how much depreciation expense was uh, calculated for the entire truck's life. We'll talk to you soon. All right, so I'll make this a little bit bigger because I remember seeing this on the screen. I'm like, okay, okay. So we have this thing, it's a truck, it cost us we don't care, it's a truck. We know it's a truck. It costs us $80,000. Anything else to add to that? Nope. All right, cool. It has a residual value, RV of $8,000. Cool. And so what is the amount that I am going to um, depreciate? What is my depreciable amount? I'm sorry, I'll make this even bigger. Okay, so what is our depreciable amount? And that is going to be what the cost basis, net, what the residual value is. So we are going to need to depreciate $72,000 over when? Oh, nicely done, over their useful life. All right, which was, you got it, four years, fabulous. So we are going to take that depreciable amount we are going to divide it over four years. And each year, we are going to depreciate $18,000. So effectively, this is saying, um, this is how much cost, cost we are using each year. All right, so this is annual depreciation amount. And for bonus points, the journal entry is going to be depreciation expense. We are going to credit accumulated uh, depreci depreciation truck. And that will be for this amount here. And this is Okay, we got a count, we got a mount, and this is to record um, annual depreciation expense. 
Cool. All right. And so literally, we would do this. This would be year one. We copy paste people. We didn't do anything to this truck. All right. Um, we copy paste. We copy paste. We copy paste. We copy paste. And this is called year two. This is called year three. And this is called year four. All right. And so how much have we depreciated each year? Um, 18,000. So over the truck's useful life of four years, we've depreciated by 18,000. Uh, so that's been each year 18,000 to the um, income statement, which means it's been collected as a contra account to our truck asset in the amount of $72,000. So 72, we get that because that's that. I guess I'll add them up. Why not? So at the end of year three, we got that one. And at the end of year four, we got that one. All right. So over the, to answer B, how much, um, was the depreciation over the truck's life. It was $72,000, which is exactly what we wanted it to be based on the depreciable amount. All right, always nice when it works out as, as we expected. Alrighty, alrighty. Okay, I'm gonna just put that as A. Cool, let's, let's go back to the slides. All right, so that was straight line. Let's look at the second method, diminishing balance. So this produces a decreasing annual depreciation expense over an asset's useful life. And so this means that we depreciate the asset the most at the beginning of the life, kind of like how we would see the cars, a car's value decrease the most at the beginning of the life. And then as we get towards the end of the asset's useful life, the depreciation expense declines. Okay, so each year it declines, hence it's called the diminishing balance method. So in order to calculate this, uh, depreciation expense is calculated by multiplying the carrying amount, that is the net book value of the asset, each year by the depreciation rate. Uh, this can be applied using di uh, different rates. Um, and we will look here at depreciation rate that uses the straight line rate times the multiplier. So let's think back to that first example where the car cost 33,000 or the truck, pardon me, um, and they had uh, the useful life of five years and 100,000 kilometers. Okay, so we would take that entire beginning value of uh, the truck and we would take that amount. We don't care about residual value in the diminishing balance method. So we start off with the entire uh, amount at the beginning, the 33,000, and we take it um, by our uh, depreciation rate and for this example we are saying that uh, the multiplier is 2 so the question will give you a multiplier and uh, we would apply that to our straight line depreciation rate so we had our depreciation rate because we knew that it was five years 100% or you know all the years divided by five years means our depreciation rate is 20% per year times by our multiplier means that 33,000 times by 20% times two equals depreciation expense in the first year of $13,200. Then the next year, the carrying amount would be 33,000 less 13,200. So your opening rate would be, what would that be? 19,800 times by 20% times two equals a lower depreciation rate. And you keep doing this until uh, the asset is either sold or retired. So you're never gonna actually get this asset down to zero on your books because you'll always have a carrying balance times by something that is not zero. So um, you know, eventually you'll get a depreciation expense that is just so minuscule and really um, immaterial. So even management might say, hey, cool, it's still in the books. We're either not gonna depreciate this anymore because it's immaterial 
uh, or it'll just be like, I don't know, just caught up in, uh, in the calculations, but nobody's reviewing them anymore. That's pragmatically how it's happening, but it'll just never be zero. And we don't care about the residual value in the diminishing balance method. So my question to you is, which type of depreciation do you think is most popular? And once you have an idea in your mind, I want you to tell me one or two reasons why you think it's most popular. So I'll give you a moment, come back and let me know what you think. All right, if you said typically straight line is preferred, uh, perhaps it's simple, uh, easy to execute, and um, within easy to execute and simple, it means that it is less timely, so it requires less time to prepare, and time typically equals money or resources, so yeah. Um, unless there's, um, okay, I should take this. Hmm. It's preferred, it might not always be appropriate. So remember, um, and I don't think I actually explicitly got into this, we'll talk about it a bit more in the next learning objective, but the rate that is chosen is the one that best reflects the asset's useful life and the decline of the asset over that time. So for example, with the car, it might be the most appropriate to use double declining balance, so that depreciation rate times two, double declining, maybe even triple declining, just depending. Um, because you want to use up the majority of the asset's value near the beginning. However, uh, things like, mm, I don't know, let's go with a fence. Like a fence is going to be a fence, it's going to be a fence. It's not like it goes up on day one and we're like, wow, what a fence. And on like year five, we're like, mm, that's like, like a quarter of a fence. No, we're like, cool, it still does the fence thing that it needs to do, um, keep what we need in, dogs, um, cattle, etc., uh, and keeps uh, intruders out, or at least acts as a deterrent. So a fence is most likely going to be, um, you know, something that we use the straight line. So straight line, most popular, uh, when in doubt if it's a tie, do straight line, uh, quick, easy, good to review. Yeah, that's why. All right. Uh, thank you so, so much. Uh, we have one more learning objective for this chapter. I will see you in the next one. We'll talk later. Bye. We'll talk soon.